Wondering how the Echobe Smart Sensor fits into your home kit home? In this video, we're gonna take a look. Hey guys, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you new smart home content every single week, looking at Apple HomeKit, Amazon, Google, and whatever else I find interesting. If you find that interesting, do me a favor, subscribe, click on the bell, and you'll be notified when new videos are out. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Echobee Smart Sensor. So this particular smart sensor was provided to me by Echobee as a review unit, so I want you guys to know that just in case you think it influences my opinion. So the Echobee Smart Sensor is a kind of a unique device in the HomeKit world in that it is a motion and contact sensor built into the same device. So the Echobee Smart Sensor is a contact sensor. You've seen these before, two pieces, magnet, contact sensor, bring them together, closed, open them up, open. These are great for telling when doors are open or patio doors, windows, and they will definitely be used in the Echobee security offering Haven. That's where these things are pretty cool. But you can also leverage these in your Apple HomeKit home by using the contact sensors for things like when a door is open, turn on a light. When a door is open, make an announcement. These kinds of things, which is great. How is this different from the other HomeKit compatible contact sensors? This has a little secret in it. If you look real close, there's a circle here at the bottom, which is actually a motion sensor. So this is one of the first, and, and to my knowledge, the only motion sensor contact sensor combination that is available to HomeKit today. The other thing that's different about this particular contact sensor is the fact that it is using an RF 900 megahertz uh, radio frequency. So it is lower band. It is, this is not Zigbee, this is not Bluetooth, this is not Wi-Fi, which means you're going to need a Echobee thermostat or an Echobee smart camera to be able to use this. Another caveat that I do want to point out is that it only currently at least gets exposed to HomeKit if you're pairing it with your thermostat. So what do I think of this? Uh, honestly, it's been fairly good. Um, it lets me know when windows are open. The motion sensor is is pretty good. It's pretty responsive. I would love to see Echo be do more with this though. Imagine a world where your patio door is open for longer than five minutes. Automatically, the HVAC system's turned off. We've all had our mom saying, "Hey." Are you trying to cool the whole world or warm the whole world? So this could be used by Echobee to get more context into their system and make some more intelligent decisions when heating or cooling our homes. Let's take a look. So getting into the speeds and feeds, the Echobee Smart Sensor is a RF 915 megahertz frequency, which means you're gonna get a little more distance out of it, but you will be required to pair this with either an Echobee camera or thermostat. This is a combination contact and motion sensor. It's got a CR2477 three year battery life, so this should last a long time. And it's got an operating range of between zero to 40 degrees Celsius, which also means that you're gonna be able to put this on an outside window and you shouldn't have too much trouble with that. So from a size standpoint, the Echobee Smart Sensor is right in that mid-range. It's definitely larger than the Akara contact sensor, but it's uh, it's smaller than the Geek, or at least less, less chunky, and um, a little bit shorter than the Eve, right? So it's kind of right in that mid-range, which is not a bad thing. It's not going to be too ugly on your windows. And the size difference when compared to something like the Akara, the fact that you get that motion sensor as well as the contact sensor behavior is, I think, a really nice addition that definitely, from a trade-off standpoint, I would take the Echo B rather than the Akara in that I get twice as much functionality from the same device. And with that, let's get to the unboxing. So the Echobee Smart Sensor arrives in this cute little box, and I do have to say I like the new style that Echobee has put together. Um, kind of minimalistic, I like the iconography, all of that is great, and it really it's telling you what it's for, which is to bring your home together. So typically, this is going to be used with the Haven security system, which we're gonna do a review just on that uh, to let you know how what that's all around, but you can use it as well, exposing it out to Apple HomeKit as a motion slash contact sensor if you wanna go in that direction. Again, as I already mentioned, this is a uh, 900 megahertz device, so it's got pretty decent range, uh, but it does it is going to require a base, whether you're connecting it to the Echobee camera or the Echobee thermostat is kind of your choice here. So you can see here in the instructions, pretty clear, there is the base of itself, which is the contact sensor, a magnet, and a motion sensor connected to it. So most of the contact sensors that we've looked at that are home compatible do not have the motion sensor built in. Those are usually two separate products. So the fact that they put this together here is kind of a unique uh, a unique flavor that we haven't seen before in the home kit world. 
So taking a closer look here, you can see this comes with the uh, the 3M, the tape on the back of it for mounting. And once you pry it apart, you can see the total size here is, it's a little bit chunkier than some of the other available uh, contact sensors, but that's because of the embedded motion sensor as well, which is something you're not going to get with the other contact sensors, at least not currently in the home kit world. You can see the battery here. This is a three year battery life is the claim. It is a uh, CR2477, three volt. And um, I, I love it that this is the, the typical watch battery size. This is not have the problem of some of the other uh, the home kit contact sensors which have this weird kind of a, a half double a uh, which are uh, honestly i've had trouble finding batteries for the other ones sometimes they they're starting to cost as much as the contact sensor what i originally paid for it so really really happy the fact that echo b has provided this uh this easily findable battery at least in canada um here you can see the contact sensor you've got the round part there that's the motion sensor and it's just going to go on a window and away we go so let's get on to the pairing here. The pairing you're going to have to do directly within the Echo B app. Uh, this is not a typical HomeKit device where you're going to be able to pair it uh, directly to HomeKit itself. You're going to have to pair this to a hub, which in this case, the hub is a lot more functional in that it's your thermostat or it's the camera itself. So again, I've got both in my installation here. I can choose either one. You're going to want to be careful about which one you choose in that if you choose the camera, as I've done here, um, you're going to have to come back and basically uninstall it from the camera and reconnect it to the thermostat in that it is only exposed at least currently to HomeKit if you connect the Echo B uh, smart sensor to the Echo B thermostat. So once that's connected here, you get to choose whether it's connected to a door or a window. Uh, that really doesn't seem to make much of a difference here. Although I like the fact that, as you can see from the app, Echo B is giving us a little bit of a hint as to how you should actually uh, mount it, how you should connect it, give your sensor a unique name. They really make the setup process really uh, sleek. And like I said, uh, tell you exactly where to put it, right? Which is a good thing. Sometimes you're trying to figure out where exactly should this thing go. And depending on what kind of windows, whether you have a uh, winch style window, sliding window, a window that opens straight out, like again, a lot of different options here and they're kind of telling us how we should be mounting it, which is nice. I think, uh, you know, obviously we can do whatever we want, but I like the fact that they've taken that user experience on to give us a hint as to where they thought that we should be putting it. So speeding this up a little bit, um, they're giving you a clue on how exactly this is going to work. It's intended to be in a vertical position. Glow means go. Again, uh, the app is really good for people who aren't familiar with this. I like the fact that they don't assume that you're technical in any way, and they really take you through all of the different details of what you're going to need to get this up properly complete with articles if you're more of a reading person than a visual person. Lots of pictures in here. They've done a really good job from a UX standpoint, I believe at least. So now all systems are go. I do have the camera, which uh, I've already done a review on. I'll put a link up above, as well as the thermostat. I've got an Echo B4, which is the, um, the version that comes with Madam A installed, although I have her turned off in that. And again, I've got reviews on that as well. Um, so which product are you adding to my home? I'm going to go in and do the second room sensor here. But this time I'm going to add it to the main thermostat, right? I'm not going to connect it to the camera. So, uh, and, and with that, this is how I discovered the differences in the home kit behavior, right? So I'm going to put that to the main floor camera and then we'll fast forward through this so that we can get to uh, actually seeing how these things are exposed into home kit. So strangely enough, the Echo B is not seen as a bridge, although really that's the function that it's uh, it's performing here, is it is a bridge for the smart sensors, the remote sensors. So I would have expected it to see in the hubs and bridges, but it's not there. So instead we're gonna go the other way and go look at the thermostat itself and see what's connected here. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of Echo B sensors here. So these are the, the older style room sensors, the gen one of these. And down here at the bottom, I now have a smart sensor connected. And if I long tap into that, I can see that it's actually a contact sensor and a motion sensor and it's connected to um, the, the thermostat, right? So all of this is, is kind of cool, but again, interesting. I don't see that other smart sensor. So if we go over to the camera on the other hand, and this is the Echo B camera, we perform that same long press, go inside and look at it. 
there's nothing here. So in talking to Ecobee, we should see in the future that the camera um, sensors exposed to the camera are going to be exposed to HomeKit as well, but right now they're not. So again, if you've exposed them to the camera and you're wondering why they're not showing up, hint, hint, uh, go connect them to your thermostat. So that's the review, guys. Uh, overall, I'm happy with the Ecobee Smart Sensor. I think it is an interesting product. I do love the fact that it has got the, uh, the the contact sensor and the motion sensor in there. That's a nice feature that you don't have necessarily in all of them, and you can kind of get your devices down into a single device in certain areas, so you don't have to have a motion sensor like a Philips Hue uh, on the wall or a contact sensor, right? So being able to put more of these things together, I think, is a good thing. The fact that when you pair it to the smart camera, it doesn't get exposed to HomeKit, to me, feels like a bug. On the bright side, if you've got an Ecobee camera, chances are you've already got a thermostat, and you can pair the smart sensor to the thermostat and have it exposed with no issues. So we're going to take a look at the smart sensor in context of the Ecobee Haven security system in an upcoming video. If there's anything I haven't covered today or questions that you still have around the Ecobee Smart Sensor, do me a favor, put them in the comments below and I'd be happy to get to that as quickly as possible. If you guys enjoyed the video, please, likes, shares, always appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already. In the interest of supporting creators in our community, I want you guys to do me a favor, check out Nick over at Home Tech Reviews. He's got some good content starting to come up. New creator, new videos. Definitely give you another idea of what to do with your smart homes. Go check that out. At this point in the video, I'm going to say goodbye, leave you over here with a video that YouTube thinks you might want to watch next.